So, you've decided that you would finally like to try smoking a pipe, but you're a little unsure as to where to start. The pipe smoking hobby can seem a little intimidating for someone at first who's just getting into it. it seems like there's all sorts of esoteric rules and regulations, do's and don'ts. Well, hopefully this video can serve you as a very basic tutorial on how to get started, what to do, the whole process from picking your first pipe to getting your first tobacco, loading the pipe, lighting the pipe, and finally smoking the pipe. I hope you enjoy it. There are so many different pipe shapes and pipe makers out there. That's kind of part of the fun of the pipe hobby. If you're someone who's into collecting, you could really get into collecting the various shapes by the various makers. You have things that are a bent pipe, like this. You can have stubby straight pipes, like this. This is a little straight billiard pipe. You have corn cob pipes, like this. This is a Peterson system pipe. We're not gonna get into all this, but just to show you some of the shapes available, this is an Italian pot shape here, a Costello. You could spend a very, very great deal of money on a pipe. This one right here is a little saddle bit straight billiard. It's called a saddle bit because of the way the stem is here. You can see this is a tapered stem. This is a saddle bit stem. This is a straight shanked billiard shape. This is the first pipe I ever purchased. I got this when I was 18 years old. I think it was around $30 back then, which was a while ago, and it smokes fine. You won't always find a great pipe for $30 that smokes fine. Um, you may have to end up spending closer to $100 maybe on a decent pipe. You could go all the way up to the $1,000 range, like this Dunhill from 1964, but if you're just starting out, I would recommend you get a basic straight billiard briar pipe. Briar is the kind of wood that the pipe is made out of. You could go with the corn cob, and a lot of people have a lot of success with that. They are very cheap. I just personally feel like when you're first starting out, it's easier to learn on a briar pipe than it is on a corn cob pipe. But some people wouldn't agree with me on that. A straight billiard shape, I think, is the easiest to learn on as well because if you have to put a pipe cleaner into it, if it's getting too moist, it's very easy on a straight billiard shape. It's easier just mechanically to get your head around it. When you start getting into things that are a little more complicated like this, the bench shape, it has a lot more going on mechanically than just a very basic, normal, straight billiard. I think when you're starting out, that's what I would recommend. Don't go for the very long Gandalf stemmed type pipes. You don't need a big church warden, that's what they're called. Uh, just start with a very basic, very uh, stolid, dependable, straight billiard pipe like this. And since you don't really know whether or not pipe smoking is something you're going to be continuing with, when you're first starting out, I wouldn't spend more than $100 to $150 on a pipe. So now that you've chosen your pipe, what else do you need in order to actually load your pipe, light it, and smoke an entire bowl? At the bare minimum, you will need some sort of lighter. This is just a Peterson pipe lighter. You could use matches, a Bic lighter, anything you want. You also need a pipe tool. This is a very, very cheap Czech pipe tool. If you just look that up, Czech pipe tool, you will find one of these online. They're usually around a dollar to two dollars. You will also need pipe cleaners. Here I have a nice little assortment of pipe cleaners, normal size, extra puffy size, all sorts that you could find, but just normal will probably do you just fine. And then I like to have a pipe ashtray. Um, there are all sorts of different ashtrays you could use. They don't have to be specifically made for a pipe, but this one just has areas here for you to lay a pipe. It has a little bit of cork, which has been kind of mangled through years of use, but you can use this to actually tap out your pipe when you're done at the end. I don't really use that very often. I usually just scoop it out with my tool, but a pipe ashtray is nice to have. Now, you've chosen your pipe, you have the tools you need to smoke your pipe, you have your pipe ashtray perhaps, pipe cleaners, lighters, all that good stuff. 
And now it's time to pick your first pipe tobacco. And I can't really tell you what first pipe tobacco you should try because everyone's different, everyone has a different taste. I prefer non-aromatic pipe tobacco blends, and that means they are blends that don't have any obvious added flavoring. So if you're thinking of a cherry vanilla flavor, that would be an aromatic blend or something that's apples and cinnamon or uh, even alcohol flavored rum or whiskey. I prefer a non-flavored pipe blend because for me personally, those blends are often very wet, very gloopy. They can give me tongue bite, which is a kind of stinging to the tongue and the roof of the mouth that can occur sometimes when you're smoking a pipe. There are some people who love aromatic blends, but I think if you're trying pipe smoking for the very first time to give you the best chance to succeed, you should try a more mild non-aromatic blend and also stay away from the really cheap drugstore blends like Captain Black, things like that. Again, I know there are people who like those blends a lot, but again, to give yourself the best chance to succeed and to make sure that you actually will enjoy the pipe smoking hobby, I would recommend a mild, more premium non-aromatic blend. There are things like GLPs here. It's an American blender. They make all sorts of blends. Um, and they range from around nine to ten dollars a tin if you buy it online. It's not that much more than getting a pouch of Captain Black from your local drugstore, and I think you will have a much better time if you try a blend like this. There are so many tobacco blends out there. I have a whole playlist of tobacco blend reviews. You should check that out, see if anything catches your eye. Um, but it's really just a matter of personal preference. I would just say, when you're starting out, stay away from aromatics and stay away from the really cheap stuff. There are almost as many ways of packing your pipe as there are pipe smokers. I'm just going to show you a very simple, very basic way for you to use when you first start out. And if you get into the hobby and you get more experience, you can try some of the other methods that are out there. Here's how I recommend you pack your pipe when you're just starting out. Again, there are all sorts of other methods, but I think this is the simplest and the easiest to learn. Number one though, you wanna make sure that your pipe tobacco is of the proper moisture content. So this tobacco here is just about right. It doesn't stick together, but it also isn't so dry that it's just like tinder. You want it right around there. If it's a little too wet, you can just take some out, put it aside for a few minutes until it dries out a little bit. Here we go. This method is pretty simple. You just take a pinch of the tobacco, you let it fall into the pipe, give it a little tap like this on the side. You're not cramming it in there, you're just letting it loosely fall into the pipe. I put a piece of paper down just to keep things a little tidier. Once you have it pretty much filled over the rim, loosely, you take your check tool or whatever pipe tamper you have, you will need a pipe tamper, as we mentioned before, and you fairly loosely pack it into the pipe. You're gonna be halfway up the bowl, maybe slightly less this first time. Then you go again. You let more fall into the bowl, again, fairly loosely, again, tapping the side. And once again, you tamp. This time you do it a little bit more firmly. And this time you should be around two thirds up the side of the bowl like that. Then you do it one more time. Loosely let it get in to the pipe bowl. This time I let it come well over the rim and then I pack it down quite a bit more firmly this final time and I will even use my fingers. It doesn't have to be that complicated. I just tidy up the rim Make sure there isn't a lot sticking out over the top of the pipe rim. And there you have it. The pipe is loaded. Fairly simply, fairly easily. One thing you wanna do when you get your pipe loaded up is take a little practice draw on the pipe. So you just take a couple puffs in 
without the pipe being lit and make sure that there's no obstruction, that it's not packed so tightly that you can't easily draw air through the pipe, but not too easily. You want it to feel kind of like you are drinking a milkshake through a straw. So it doesn't come up really, really easily, but it's not so difficult that you can't get any of that delicious milkshake out of the cup. That's packing the pipe. You have your pipe, you have your pipe tools, you have your pipe tobacco. You have packed that pipe tobacco into your pipe. And now you're ready to light it. And I guess the number one question I get asked all the time is, do you need matches to light a pipe? And the answer is, no, you don't. You don't have to use wooden matches. It's okay to use almost anything you have that can produce fire around the house. I typically use a cheap disposable Bic lighter. It works fine. There are a lot of people who will tell you that you have to use wooden matches in order to light a pipe, but that is not true. There's nothing wrong with using wooden matches. You're perfectly within your rights to use wooden matches. You could use a very expensive pipe lighter like this. This is a butane pipe lighter by Dunhill. It's very expensive. Uh, this is one that's slightly less expensive by Peterson. You want to probably stay away from the torch style lighters uh, with some caveats there. There are some people who actually do like using those for certain packing methods. But seriously, a Bic lighter works just fine. I've been smoking a pipe for a very long time. I've used pretty much every method you could think of to light a pipe from wooden kitchen matches to butane lighters to Bic lighters like this to Zippo lighters, to hemp wicks. I've used it all, and I have not noticed any real appreciable difference between the various methods as far as flavor and ease of smoking your pipe. A Bic lighter works fine. It's okay. But let me show you how you actually light your tobacco. Now that your pipe is packed not too firmly and not too loosely, it is time to actually light it. Now, your objective here is to create a disc of charred ash on top of your unburnt tobacco. That's called the charring light, and I'm going to show you how that works. We're going to use, in this case, just a disposable Bic lighter. Use whatever you prefer. Matches are fine. Pipe lighters are fine. Here we go. You're puffing air into the pipe as you hold the lighter over the bowl of the pipe. Make sure you don't hold it over the rim in any one spot for too long because you could char the rim. You can see how it all puffs up there over the rim of the pipe. What you want to do is take your check tool here and you tamp that down. Not super firmly, but firmly enough that you start developing this nice disc of burnt tobacco. And you can see here that I still have some unburnt pieces of tobacco there. So the first charring light didn't take that time. We're going to try again. Again, not holding the lighter over the pipe for too long, moving it around. We're tamping this down now. And we have a fairly even disc here of charred tobacco over the unburnt tobacco in the pipe bowl. This is basically what you want to maintain the entire time you're smoking the pipe. You may have to relight every once in a while, but what you're doing is really lighting the pipe tobacco underneath this charred disc. If you keep that nice even disc there, you tamp it down as the tobacco underneath burns, you will have a nice even burn of the pipe bowl. So we're gonna try one more time. Tamp it one more time. Again, not super hard, just enough that you get a little bit of resistance when you puff. And that's about right. And that is what your bowl should pretty much look like. 
As tobacco burns, it wants to kind of puff up. So you're keeping it nice and compacted so it's always in contact with this ember, this charred disc of tobacco over top of the ember. As you smoke down through the bowl, as you keep it tamped, you may develop a very thick disc of ash over top of your unburnt tobacco. If you want, you can tip the pipe, that is, tip it upside down and tap it a little bit to get some of that ash off. You don't usually need to do that though, because if you think about it, the flame that you're getting from your lighter, as you puff it into the bowl, is going to be able to strike even the tobacco at the very bottom of the bowl as you get down far enough that you will have a thick layer of ash in your bowl, so you don't have to tip your bowl. And as you smoke, you want to balance puffing with not puffing. You don't want to puff so hard that you get the tobacco burning really, really hot. That can kill the flavor. It can also get so hot that it damages the size of your pipe. You want a fairly low smoldering kind of burn you want to be able to keep it lit, even though it will go out occasionally, no matter how good you are at smoking a pipe. Your tobacco will still go out sometimes. But just try to get a nice balance, and that's something that you're going to learn as you smoke. It's learning how not to go too fast or too slowly, keeping it burning, keeping the flavor there, and just enjoying it. Now, depending on how moist your tobacco is, the way your pipe smokes, the relative humidity in the air where you are, you may get some moisture in the heel of the bowl. And as you puff on your pipe, you may notice a little bit of a gurgle or something. If that's the case, you can take a pipe cleaner, just put it into the stem, let it draw up some of that moisture, take it out. This, you can't really see any moisture on here because this pipe is still dry at the moment, but occasionally that will happen. Just always keep pipe cleaners on hand and you can just shove it down there, suck up that moisture and continue smoking. You don't want to inhale the smoke, believe me, especially if you've never smoked a pipe before. But even if you're a veteran, you probably don't want to inhale the smoke. Pipe tobacco is not meant to be inhaled, the smoke from the tobacco. It's stronger than cigarettes, maybe not quite as strong as a really, really strong cigar, but it's a whole different beast. It's not meant to be inhaled, it's meant to be puffed into the mouth, tasted, enjoyed, and then expelled. You may find it a little difficult to avoid inhaling when you're just starting out and trying to juggle puffing and lighting and all of that. Um, but do your best, because if you do accidentally inhale some of this, you will get very green very quickly. It's very harsh and very strong. It's meant to be puffed, not inhaled. And there you have it, the basics of pipe smoking. Obviously, there is a lot more that I could get into. I have tons of videos on my channel if you want to get into the real nitty gritty of the pipe smoking hobby, but I think this will set you up pretty well if you're just starting out. Thank you so much for watching. Mmm, yes. Oh, hello. Do you like videos about pipes and or pipe tobacco? and other fun subjects like that? Well, YouTube doesn't. In fact, they dislike those kinds of videos so much that they don't let us monetize them because they consider them unsuitable for most advertisers. But if you do, please consider supporting us on patreon.com slash stuffandthingsshow. Link in the description box below. It would be much appreciated and it would go towards helping us create more content like this.